The future of Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't look that great right now. I really like looking at OCG metagame trends to know what the future of the TCG that we're playing is looking like and this time after a big ban list that hit a lot of snake eye cards on the OCG side, a new set that just released with three pretty viable archetypes. I was hoping to see a bit of a shift in both game design and how people build their decks but unfortunately that's not the case. So in this video we're going to be looking at the OCG metagame once again to break down and see what the future of our game looks like. And I gotta tell you, it's not looking that great. Let's start off with Snake Eyes Fiendsmith. Of course, this is the deck right now, both in the OCG and the TCG. And in the OCG, they took an approach to not kill this deck. Which means that cards like Wanted and Snake Eye Ash are at 1. And they purposefully did not kill the deck. In addition to that, Bonfire is semi-limited for some reason, just to not be an extender to search for Snake Eye Ash. And the Fiendsmith engine not only is at full power, but got an actual second wave of support with the new Lacrima Girl that can send any Fiendsmith card from the deck to the graveyard. So people are playing that at one as well. Now Rage of the Abyss is also bringing on a new engine called Azamina, and if you just wanted to slap an Omni Negate on your board, you can. And it's always a one card combo with Diabellstar. And since you have three Diabellstar and one Wanted, also Sinful Spoils, Deception, and Sacred Azamina, all of them get you to that engine, and I made a video about Azamina, so go check it out if you want to learn how that actually works. A few interesting things that we can look at this deck to understand what the future of our game is looking like. So first of all, of course the Azamina engine. A lot of people have made videos about that engine, I made videos about it. It's basically a very simple engine that provides an additional Omni Negate to your board and it works really well in a deck that already runs a lot of Sinful Spoils cards. So starting off your combo with putting an Omni Negate on the board is rough. Now of course people are playing three of the new Malcharmi for Warus that is essentially max C for summoning from the deck or extra deck. So naturally, people are gravitating to play that in the main deck alongside with three Ash Blossom and three Maxi. I think Maxi is going to get banned their next ban list, but we'll make a video about that separately. And people are also main decking Droll because of the effect of the new Malchami. Obviously, you can Ash the new Malchami because it includes an effect that draws cards, but if your opponent already resolved that Malchami, you can Droll it after they draw one card. It also impacts you, but at least it lets you play. Another very interesting and honestly kind of a disgusting deck here is Majesty's Fiend. Majesty's Fiend is a light fiend monster, which means it is searchable by the Fiendsmith engine. You discard the Fiendsmith, add Fiendsmith tracked, and then add any light fiend from the deck to the hand. You can add the Majesty's Fiend and discard any additional card. And if you have a normal summon, you can just tribute summon Majesty's Fiend. And it essentially is a mystic mine. It is double-sided, but if you have any protection for this card or just manage to put it on the board after your full combo, it's kind of insane. Now, people are gravitating to play some trap cards that are usually going first side cards in the main. And those are summon limited skill drain that are both limited in the OCG right now. Why are people playing them? So this is another effect of the new Malchami card. People assume that since there are nine copies of Malchami essentially in the OCG, people usually play three Malchami, three of Maxi, and then there's also another set of three Malchami Perulias that people no longer play because they're worse than Fawaris. So people assume they're gonna get Maxi to death or even double Maxi because you can activate both of them in the same turn. So they want to have a plan to just set cards, not give their opponent anything, and win off of those. So it's essentially sort of like a turn skip, but cards like Summon Limited, Skill Drain prevent that. In the extra deck, there's really nothing special, but in the side deck, we can see a few interesting trends. First of all, Archfiend's Eccentric. It is the Pendulum Monster you see here, part of the Archfiend archetype, and guess what? It is also a Light Fiend. So if you need a searchable way to out your opponent's back row, for example, the Summon Limits and Skill Drains we talk about, this is the perfect app. You can search it with Tract, place it in the Pendulum Zone, and destroy that and your opponent's spell and trap, and just start playing. Now, Retaliating C is seeing a lot of play in a lot of decks right now, it's essentially a shifter if your opponent special summons a monster and it really stops your opponent in their tracks and this is a really really popular card we'll see that again in other decks here in this video two copies of delta one gamma and one driver again spell cards are being really heavily used right now and especially the azamina engine delta 
can counter the sinful spells deception or the sacred azamina that gets your opponent an omni negate so you really have to stop it otherwise your hand traps do nothing and one copy of power sink stone people are realizing skill drain is a really good card and this is why they're playing power sink stone it's essentially a mini mystic mine skill drain so we can see in this just one deck that we're looking at today out of the four so many meta trends that i'm really not looking forward to this hopefully the tcg does the ban list differently to balance this because this is just a pile of cancer now moving on quickly from snake eyes into tenpai this is obviously probably the second best deck or even sometimes the best deck in the ocg right now and we don't really see anything super unique we obviously are seeing the six maxis the ash blossoms the veilers and also the delta gamma and driver here shifters are commonplace alongside the bestial magnemite i think the most interesting card here in this list that you're definitely going to be seeing it being played in the tcg as well is dominus impulse it's a trap that can be activated from the hand that negates an effect that special summons a monster so again the azamina cards but both in the mirror match as well and you just give up the effects of light earth and wind monsters for the rest of the duel which tenpai doesn't care about at all now again the extra deck is pretty standard and again we're seeing retaliating c in the side it's not enough that there's two shifters in the main retaliating c is another really good solution for just not allowing decks to play three heat wave cross out for the duster and the heavy storm and yeah an additional two copies of nibiru now a deck that you already know that has seen a bit of experimentation a bit of success earlier on in the phantom nightmare format but really kind of fell off is voiceless voice really simple deck that plays really well under maxi this is why it saw a little bit more success in the ocg than in the tcg just normal summon a low get an omni negate on the board untargetable huge powerhouse beat stick and so much recursion with the three continuous cards they have the two spells and the trap allows you to refresh your entire engine every single turn now out of the new set crossover breakers that introduces three new archetypes i'm making a series of videos about those archetypes on my channel so check it out if you want to know about them but check this out this deck is running a very small package of the ryuge engine so the ryuge have their boss monster which is a light dragon ritual monster it is extremely searchable in this deck and once you get to it you can place it in the pendulum zone activate its effect destroy it and add one ryuga card from your deck and that will be the wind continuous spell that does a few other things but mostly what it does is that during your opponent's turn any monster sent to their graveyard is banished instead so again we saw that with shifter retaliating see another engine that allows you to just macro cosmos or rather dimensional fissure your opponent searchable in this deck dogmatica is still seeing play here which is pretty cool extravagance and in the side deck a nice play set of all the multchamis i'm not looking for it for the third one now the last deck i want to talk about today is the deck out of crossover breakers that is seeing the majority of success out of that set and that's Ryzeal. Again, making a video about that on the channel regardless, so check that out to understand what it actually does and how it plays. But this is essentially a rank four turbo engine that allows you to end on an Xyz monster that just targets and pops his quick effect. Remember Zodiac Dryden? So that does it three times instead of just one. It's really, really toxic. And as you can see, the top row is the monsters, but everything else is almost like exclusively non-engine. Look at how many hand traps are in this deck. And this is the problem with Yu-Gi-Oh's design right now. Tiny engines, 25 non-engine cards, and the one card combos that just do too much. Again, check out the video if you wanna see what this deck actually does. In the side deck, more retaliating Cs, anti-spell, reboot, summon limit, and of course, three solemn strike. This is again a strategy for playing around and under the new maxi, the new Mulchummy. You just said this, and it usually is enough with a few hand trips. Just win the game, start over a new in the next turn and that has been this week's ocg metagame look into the future a lot of very interesting design choices and a lot of interesting tech choices being used especially that snake eye deck is just horrendous to look at and if you were hopeful about the tcg maybe this will put a different light and a different perspective into your eyes let me know in the comments what you think about this of course if you like this type of content make sure to like this video Share it with a friend who really needs to know which cards to pick up and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.